state grant that is designed to help solve violent crime, and this is money that would go to Cincinnati police where officers can continue to focus on frequent crime areas. It is our top story for you tonight. We thank you for joining us at 6 o'clock. I'm Tanya O'Rourke. And I'm Craig McKee. The other focus here is getting guns out of criminals' hands. WCPO 9 News anchor Brent Bogansky is live at City Hall. So, Brad, some on City Council see it as part of an overall solution to a very complex problem. That's absolutely the case. At least two on city council really feel like law enforcement can't always be there to step in before things happen, but they really do feel like this grant money is just one piece of the puzzle to help this solve this very complex issue. And they feel like even though it may not look like a lot of money, it certainly can go a long way. Once they see me, they move on, they speak and they move on. That's the respect that I have with the student population. Whether it's Omar Marshall, a school resource officer at Don High School. So there's so much going on, but we have to be there for them to let them know that we are there and we care. Or Rufus Johnson, a community activist in Cincinnati. I go to these places personally to make sure that this, these students are not migrating or hanging around. It's about being present and building relationships with young people. They know they can't be everywhere, but after seeing the attacks in downtown Cincinnati on January 23rd and 24th, they're once again making themselves available for help. I am one of those advocates that says, I know there's not countless amount of money, but we gotta make sure Cincinnati remains one of the safest major cities in this country. In order to do that, Cincinnati City Council applied for a nearly $97,000 grant to help police. It pays for four hours of overtime per week, per position for one year, for six police officers and a supervisor sergeant. It's the gun crime intelligence center that, you know, folks are using 3D printing to make firearms. And so if we can make sure that we are continuing to give them the tools and the resources that they need to take guns off the street. The other focus is on high crime areas for the pivot unit, which stands for placed based investigations of violent offender territories. Something that's also stood out after the drive by shooting death of 11 year old Dominic Davis in November of last year. If you're going to be involved in this type of behavior, there's a price to pay. That price is both time and money, whether that's at City Hall or Government Square. Don't give up. Continue to fight. Continue to fight and try to find solutions. And tomorrow here at City Hall at 930 in the morning, Police Chief Teresa Thiege is planning on giving an update about violent crime specifically when it comes to young people. We are live outside City Hall tonight. Brett Pagansky, WCPO 9 News.